Hey guys and welcome to or back to the Boards in Pursuit podcast with your host Summer Clark. So happy Wednesday everyone as per usual thank you for returning or joining the podcast this week. Today I'm going to be talking about the effects of sleep on agility performance. Now what inspired me to talk about this is I've just attended Iconics by Night Absolutely love that show with, I think, KCI, Dogs in Need and Iconics by Night, our favourite shows of the year. Absolutely love running the finals at like midnight. It's just an out of body experience. It is so different. It is so cool. I love it. But I also heard a lot of people say, oh, I'm so tired. You know, oh, it's unusual, you know, doing agility at this time. And it made me wonder, Obviously, it's fair because everyone's in the same boat and that's the fun of it. And it's not, you know, that it's only once a year for that reason, because it wouldn't be a sustainable thing to do like every week. But it got me thinking about how a lack of sleep, if you are sleep deprived or, you know, not even competing at night, just competing in general. If you are sleep deprived in your life for whatever reason, or you're just not getting enough sleep, maybe you think you get enough sleep, but you're not. You know, how does that affect your agility performance? And, you know, are you putting enough effort into getting lots of proper sleep? So that inspired today's topic. Now, I would just like to take a minute to introduce you guys to the podcast sponsor, Huel. So here I have one of the ready to drink Huel meals, the berry flavour. Huel ready to drink is a meal in a bottle with over 20 grams of protein. It really is the perfect meal for when you are on the go. You don't need to sacrifice convenience or nutrition. You can have both with ready to drink. Each serving has 26 vitamins and minerals. This means every bottle of ready to drink has 175 health benefits. It is made from natural ingredients such as coconut, sunflower seeds, tapioca, pea protein, flax seeds and hemp seed protein. Protein. Every meal is vegan and it has no gluten, no palm oil, no GMO, no lactose and no animal products whatsoever. It comes in eight delicious flavours including iced coffee caramel and strawberries and cream as well as the classics like vanilla, chocolate and banana. It is absolutely delicious and just tastes like a milkshake. It is widely sold in supermarkets, petrol stations and corner shops around the UK and it can be conveniently purchased online. I found out about Huel because I was looking for a product that would give me all the nutrients that I need while travelling to events and staying over at competitions and training events. So when it's time to refuel and have a meal I can just drink a ready to drink Huel product and get all my nutrients quickly, easily and without cooking. It's perfect when I don't have the time or the facilities to cook. For example, when I'm camping at a competition, I'm going to be drinking at least one a day at KCI and Dogs in Need. If you're super busy, just like me, then you really don't want to miss out. You can easily and conveniently shop ready to drink from Huel at the link uk.huel.com slash pause. I hugely appreciate anyone and everyone that uses my link as it helps keep this podcast running and every sale through that link helps keep my podcast podcast going. Buying through my link also gets you a free t-shirt which will be auto applied at the checkout. If you subscribe to a Huel order you can save 10%. You can choose how often your subscription comes, for example every two weeks, four weeks, six weeks etc. And these are super easy to manage on the website and you can edit whenever you like. uk.huel.com slash pause. Let's do our weekly roundup. So the previous week obviously Iconics, um, Ari did so well you've probably seen on my social media. He got first and third in jumping, so close time-wise. And then he, what else do you do? Oh, he got a second again, very close time-wise, like a second in grade seven agility. So he got first, second, third, and he made it through to the final, which didn't go to plan. It was nearly midnight. Um, I think his brain was a bit frazzled, you know, um, but he was still amazing. You know, all his runs, he showed skills that I never thought he'd show this soon. So I'm so proud of him. Uh, great dog walks. Um, Seesaw, he hates the soft line seesaws. And I spoke to a few people and they said the same. I think they, they drop slower um, than normal seesaws, which I think freaked him out because he bailed a few. He was very slow, barely past the pivot point, looking freaked out. But his um, he did give me a great confidence seesaw on the last day, which I put on my um, Instagram story and on social media, which you can see. I think it was a blue and orange ring. You'll see it. Uh, so he did do one, really good one. It, again, it's just a work in progress. Um, he's still displacing on the line a little bit, you know, getting girl smells, you know, I think he seems nervous before he runs and then as soon as I release him, he's confident. But again, it's just a slow journey. It can be frustrating, but, you know, he's coming on so much. Like his skills have been insane. Go over to my socials and watch his runs on there. 
Um, what else has happened in the previous week? I discovered the starting day for my brand new job, which I will tell you what that is on my first day. Um, and I'm so excited. So next time you listen to one of my podcasts, I will no longer be a McDonald's worker, which is amazing because I've been there for four months, four months, four years and two months, and I'm absolutely sick of it now. Um, it served its purpose, but I'm ready to move on. And the new job I've got is perfect for me. It's like my dream job. It's so exciting. Uh, still part time, so I can do all my agility and grooming and stuff like that. But I'm so excited. So you'll hear about that when you hear about it, I suppose, soon. Anyway, um, what else has happened this week? That's, oh, I've got lunch in my teeth. I'm so sorry. I've just had a bagel. Anyway, I think that's everything. Everything of any relevance, anyway, since last Wednesday. Yeah, because it was Wednesday and then Saturday were iconic. So, yeah, yeah, pretty much. And it's Tuesday today. So, without further ado, let's get into the topic. So, I had a bit of a research this morning um, on the effects of sleep on athletes. And obviously, we are, as agility handlers, we are athletes. So, let's dive straight into it. Hopefully, this is a very informative and educational episode. You could probably hear Ethel uh, sighing and snoring. She's asleep on my bed next to me. Um, bit of background noise for you, a bit of white noise. But anyway, yeah. I hope this really opens your eyes and you can start trying to get some better quality sleep. So number one that I found out from my research is that sleep allows your heart to rest and cells and tissues to repair. So obviously it is like charging your phone or technology, you know, you have to recharge it for it to function properly. So it allows that repair, that recharge to happen. So this helps your body recover after physical exertion. So that's especially important for us as agility handlers after being, say, at competition all day. And think, of, actually think about it. Most of this that I'm saying right now, yes, it's on human athletes, but it's the same for our dogs. So everything I'm saying now is pretty much the exact same for our dogs. So think about that as well. So make sure, you know, thinking about your dog, you know, having a comfortable resting area and stuff like that, especially when you go away to compete. So as you progress through the stages of sleep at night, the changes in your heart rate and breathing throughout the night promote cardiovascular health. So obviously cardio, cardiovascular health, health is heart health. And obviously to sprint around for 30 seconds while talking to our dogs, we need very good cardio, cardiovascular health um, and endurance. Our heart needs to be very strong. It needs to keep pumping that blood around our body as we do that for 30 seconds because it's a lot for us to do in one go. So that's super important. So number two, sleep helps your body prevent illness and recover from illness when it does strike you. So as you know, agility when you're ill is not fun. I've had it so many times where I've had a cold or um, a sore throat or something like that. And it's just horrible trying to do agility when you're ill, you know, your nose is bunged up, you can't breathe properly. So you're not gonna run as fast. You're not gonna be able to talk to your dog as well when you've got a sore throat. I can't do my uh, fam infamous left, right arrow because my throat's sore. Um, so that being ill obviously means that we're not going to be as good at agility handlers as we would be if we were healthy. So getting lots of sleep means we're more likely to stay healthy, which is very important. So during sleep, the body produces, now I'm going to try and say this, cytokines, 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 I think. And these are hormones that help the immune system fight off infections. So basically, without these hormones, then the immune system can't fight off infections. And these hormones are released during sleep. So the more sleep you get, the more of these hormones are released. And the stronger your immune system is going to be when it comes to fighting off those infections. My Apple Watch is pinging. I'm sorry, I'm too popular. Anyway, number three. So sleep helps you retain and consolidate memory. So this is a really interesting one. So when athletes practice and learn new skills, sleep helps form memories and contributes to improved performance in the future. So think about it when we learn a new handling move, you know, a maneuver of some description or a new handling technique, or when we're at a show and we do a, we, we handle a certain way and it works, you know, getting good sleep means that we remember that for the future you know, muscle memory wise as well. So we can do that again in the future without forgetting that success or, you know, both ways. If we do something and it really fails, then sleep helps us remember not to do that again, for example. And without sleep, the pathways in the brain that allow you to learn and make memories can't be formed or maintained. So, you know, when you're trying to learn new skills and new ways to handle your dog, 
You're not going to retain that information if you don't sleep. So number four, sleep is essential for cognitive pro cognitive processing. Loss of sleep is associated with a decline in cognitive function, which can have adverse effects on athletes whose sport requires a high level of cognitive. Co oh my god, I can't say that word. Cognitive function, such as decision making and adapting to new situations. So think about it, decision making. Agility is just basically a big decision. <laughs> so we, you know, new situations, every course is new. We haven't seen it before. Um, we, you know, you never see the same course more than once. Um, and, you know, so we need to be able to make decisions in new circumstances. In, you know, we need to decide how to handle each new course. So, you know, I, I think I had a course at Iconics and I walked it for like half an hour of a lunch trying to decide how to handle it and obviously that's normal to some extent but the more sleep you have by this research um you know the faster you'll be able to make these decisions you know the more switch can you hear that ethel's dreaming with the whites of her eyes showing i'm scared anyway sorry for that distraction but yeah, so basically, in summary, the more sleep you have, the better you are at decision making, which is imperative in those new circumstances when you are faced with a new course and you have to decide how to handle it best for your dog. So where am I? Number five is sleep helps maintain your mental health. So this is super important. I've spoke a lot about mental health before. Um, as far as agility goes, you know, you've got to deal with failure in quotation marks you've got to deal with setbacks disappointment you've got to be very mentally strong to compete in any sport so quality sleep is associated with improved overall mood and you know as we say a happy handler means a happy dog so the better your mood is because you've had lots of sleep the better your dog's mood is going to be and therefore you're both going to perform way better in the ring so it also prevents irritability, which is super important because our dogs can do irritating things in agility and we do not want to lose our temper at them. And it also decreases the risk of depression developing. So that's not just athletes, that's just everyone in general. Uh, you know, depression is quite common these days with the lifestyles that we all lead. So getting plenty of sleep means that's less likely to happen. And it's especially important for athletes because, you know, um, lots of failure, Again, in quotation marks, you know, not doing as well as we'd like over a long period of time, taking a while to get to where we want to be. That can be quite depressing um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think and as well, some athletes, you know, they peak, they achieve all these things and then they can't maintain it. And that's when they get depressed because no one can maintain that that level forever. Um, but getting lots of sleep means this is less likely to happen to you. So in a study of swimmers, now these are really interesting stats here. So in a study of swimmers, athletes who got 10 hours of sleep per night, and that's quite a lot, had better reaction times and a greater number of kick strokes. So they basically, so kick strokes, you know, as a swimmer is like, I, I suppose, steps when we run, if that makes sense, in agility. Um, so basically their body was able to output more energy, basically. Um, and better reaction times that's so important in agility you know if your dog heads towards the wrong obstacle and it's fast then we've got to have quick reaction times to quickly call them back or you know we've got to say commands rapidly one after another so reaction times in agility are probably one of the most important things about it and sleep helps that so in a study of basketball players athletes ran faster during sprints and experienced improved shooting by nine percent so basically their performance and accuracy, again, very important in agility, was improved when they got that 10 hours of sleep. So in a study of tennis players, sleep deprived athletes had decreased serve accuracy of up to 53%. So over half, so 53% worse they were at the accuracy of their sport. And that was just because they were sleep deprived. So think how that could affect you in agility. In a study of basketball players, executive functions such as passing the ball or taking a shot were delayed as athletes struggled to make decisions. So again, goes back to decision making in agility and obviously basketball and a lot of sports to be fair. Um, we have to make decisions. So for example, basketball, you have to decide who to pass the ball to um, and you have to think ahead, you know, where are they in comparison to the net um, for your team to make a shot. And then you have to decide when to make a shot 
um, look while looking around you, you know, multitasking, where are other players? Are they gonna block me? Stuff like that. Same as agility, lots going on at once and you have to be very fast. So mentally fast, not just physically fast, by the way. So number eight, in a study of, oh, I've literally just said that. Number nine, chronic sleep deprivation. So chronic as in, you know, long-term sleep deprivation leads to a higher injury rate and is associated with lower resistance to illnesses such as the common cold. So back to illnesses, you know, if you're deprived in sleep, you're probably going to get ill more, which means you are never going to perform at your best when you're ill. Unfortunately, in a sport, that's just how it is. Um, and then injury as well. If you get injured, you're pretty much buggered. I can't lie. Like, sorry to say it, but if you get injured because you're sleep deprived, then or for whatever reason, you can't do agility, really. Like if you're properly injured, you can't do it. And even if you're a little bit injured, so you've got, say, a slightly pulled hamstring or something, then you're never going to run as fast. You can't turn as fast. It's going to be painful. You know, you're not going to be concentrating because you're in pain and you're just never going to perform at your best if you've got an injury. So sleep means you are less likely to get an injury. And I've noticed that in myself hugely once I concentrated on sleep because I had quite a long term back injury for about a year. Probably not long term, really, in the big scheme of things, but it felt like a long time to me. Um, and actually, I really focused on nutrition. I ate a bit more. I ate better foods. This was about, say, two years ago, two or three years ago, two, I think. And I really cracked down on sleep and diet. And I haven't had that issue since. Touch wood. My chair is wood. Touch wood. Um, so I have noticed that in myself as well. So number 10, athletes should... So this is more advice, okay? So advice to get lots of sleep as an athlete to perform at your best. So athletes should get between seven and nine hours of sleep per night, this study said. And elite athletes should get at least nine hours. So I'm in bed for nine hours, but I take at least half, probably about half an hour to actually get into a proper sleep. So I'll probably get about between, yeah, between eight and nine, depending on how, you know, how quickly I fall asleep and again it depends um but yeah as you know elite athletes if you are aiming for the very top of agility you might want to consider that if you aren't aiming for that then you're probably fine with a bit less but yeah that's the general guideline for athletes and a study discovered that waking early is worse than staying up late so that was really interesting so if you wake up really early like 5 a.m that's actually worse apparently than staying up late till like maybe 1 a.m. But again, it you need if you're going if you're going to stay up late, you need to lie in for a bit longer to make sure you get the right amount of hours. And vice versa, if you get up early, you need to go to bed earlier. But that was really interesting. Um, so you also want to create a dark, cool, and quiet sleep environment. So your room wants to be cool, wants to be dark, no light, and it wants to be pretty quiet. Maybe a little bit of noise if you can't avoid it, but pretty quiet, as quiet as you can get it and that will help you go to sleep quicker and also stay asleep longer and get into a deeper sleep as well because obviously you've got your different stages you've got like light sleep REM sleep which is a deep sleep and stuff like that and the best kind of sleep is is deeper I think I believe anyway um I just hear people talk about REM sleep so I'm, I'm, I'm I assume that's that's the best sleep but I might actually try and get someone who knows more about sleep and the science behind it onto the podcast so let me know if that's something you're interested in because it is really interesting um also avoid alcohol and caffeine before bed some you know again not always i mean like every night so alcohol is usually consumed at night when you go out that's just fine that's just what it is it's not often um but caffeine yeah don't be having a coffee before bed that's silly or an energy drink you know you don't want your monster cracking open at 8 p.m um i think caffeine has a 10 hour life as well so a lot of people say don't have if you go to bed at 10 so two three four five six seven eight i literally can't math so yeah if you go to bed at 10 10 hours before that you know don't have caffeine before uh, after that if that makes sense so maybe stick to just caffeine in the morning before midday and then don't have any more that's what a lot of people recommend but i will often have caffeine at like 4 p.m and i'm usually fine i go to bed at like half 10 11 um so yeah just try again it's often trial and error everyone's different and everyone's going to respond differently to different things stay away from electronics before bed as well as the blue light affects your circadian rhythm so obviously circadian rhythm is your body's natural your body clock basically um and the blue light 
apparently makes your brain think that it's daylight so it stops you from sleeping i know you can get blue light glasses which i really need to invest in um especially with my new job that's online hint hint you're gonna find out soon anyway yeah i need to invest in some of those but obviously i actually wear glasses at night um so i'd have to keep my contacts in for longer to fit those on my face as well but yeah so i try and stay off electronics an hour before bed didn't do that last night and i did actually find it hard to fall asleep I was like buzzing my brain was buzzing with like ideas what i'm gonna do tomorrow what i'm gonna do in a week do you know what i mean whereas if i come off my phone and don't look at a blue look at a screen or any blue light an hour before bed and i, I usually read then i pretty much go straight to sleep so it, it's true because i've experienced it or at least for me and create a wind down routine such as having a bath reading or meditating so I still can't meditate I've tried it's hard I need to practice more if I'm going to do it but I just haven't really put the time in uh, like I said I read for an hour before bed and I also try and have a hot bath as well at the moment I come in from work at like half nine so I'll have a hot bath and having a hot bath makes you so tired like it just does so having that um, night routine should I say I think that really helps as well so you should also get out of bed after 20 minutes of failing to sleep, apparently. So this, my research has concluded that if you try and get sleep for 20 minutes and you're still awake after that time, there's no point. Keep trying because it'll be hours. Get up, go do something, say read for a bit, read for half an hour. Just get up, uh, walk around the house a little bit, um, go pet your dog, anything, just to break that cycle and then go back to bed and it's sort of, Re refreshes you like restarts that process of falling asleep in your brain if that makes sense so that was really interesting and then avoid so again more athlete based is avoid overtraining so apparently overtraining can cause you to struggle to get sleep um because it exhausts you and often you probably know the feeling of when you're that tired you're almost not tired like you get past the point of time like you're that exhausted you're too tired to sleep does that make sense I don't know if that's just me but i have experienced that before where i'm that exhausted i'm just laid there like oh my god i'm so tired and i can't actually go to sleep it's a bizarre feeling um but yeah apparently overtraining can also affect your ability to sleep very well so make sure you're taking your rest days at least one day a week um that's a whole nother topic i think in my episode about working out in the gym and handle fitness with chris Curtin, we talked a bit about this so you can go back and look at that um but yeah avoid overtraining don't push yourself too hard all the time avoid training too early or late in the day as well so for example maybe don't get up and train at 4am you know i mean some the thing is though some people actually do that don't they they get up and go to the gym at 4am or 5am before work and it works for them but this study said avoid that um and it also said avoid training too late as well so maybe, you know, I suppose it makes sense if you trained at like 10 p.m. and then came home and went to bed at midnight after literally training, like finishing your last set 20 minutes ago. You try to go to bed, your body's still probably worked up and in an aroused state. You know, you probably haven't cooled off completely yet. So I suppose that does make sense. I do understand that. At the moment, I'm an early gym goer anyway, but when I start my new job, I'm going to be an evening gym person. So we'll see how that goes. I do go to the gym on a Friday in the evening and it's fine. So we'll see how that happens, um, how that works out doing it every day. And then also, apparently you shouldn't nap for more than an hour at a time. Now, this isn't an issue for me. Oh, and it also said don't nap after 3 p.m. because then you won't be able to fall asleep at night time, which makes sense, I guess. Um, but I can't nap anyway. It makes me feel ill. I don't get sleep. I can't nap for a start like it just doesn't happen I don't fall asleep but if I do I have to either be that knackered or really ill so and I always wake up feeling way worse I always wake up feeling sick and more tired and it's horrible <laughs> and I can't get drag myself up uh, but maybe that's just because I do it when I'm exhausted or ill but anyway yeah it says don't nap for more than an hour in the day because then you just won't I, I assume that's because you won't be tired enough when you actually do try and go to sleep and it also could mess up your circadian rhythm, you know, uh, your body clock if you sleep during the day when you wouldn't normally, when your body's used to sleeping at night. And then the very last point, so point number 20, is reduce stress and stressors. So obviously this makes sense again. If you're really stressed, then you are, 
probably going to lie there awake stressing out about all the things you're stressed about we've all been there i'm sure um so do your best and i know it's really hard but do your best to reduce stresses in your everyday life and you should sleep better because your brain won't be like buzz 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 with all these stressy things you won't be laid there trying to you know problem solve all these stresses in your head because you know we go to bed we lay there we're by ourselves we're in our own heads and we just start thinking to ourselves don't we we just start thinking about all our, the things we're struggling with trying to come up with problems because often it's the only time in the day where we're actually alone with our thoughts and can think through, through things like that so another thing I thought of and I was actually listening to a fitness podcast earlier and they actually said to do this was give yourself like half an hour an hour in the day to just sit with your own thoughts so uh, one of the girls in this podcast recommended to go for a walk with no music no podcast in your ears on your own just like the noise of nature and just think and use that time in the day to go through things in your head maybe try and come up with issues uh, issues you don't want to come up with more issues try and come up with um you know resolutions to any issues you're facing in life at the moment you know do a bit of brainstorming for upcoming projects or anything that's stressing you out or taking up your brain space give yourself that time in the day to process that so you're not trying to do it when you're trying to sleep and that is all the points so i thought that was super interesting i'm going to link the website um to these studies and where i got all this information from because we don't like to plagiarize here i went to uni i know everything about that i can't do that it's it's been like trained out of me by uni <laughs> no i just think it's fair so i'm going to put the link to the majority of my research in the show notes down below um on spotify and apple podcasts and in the description on youtube so if you want to check that out it will be there for you to have a deeper look at and there's just more writing about it basically um because i summarized it in my notes and yeah that is pretty much it so again you know the drill as usual Go and follow me on all the socials. I will put them here on the YouTube video and down below in the description on YouTube and um, show notes on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And as usual, if you're feeling generous, if you could leave a nice cheeky five star review on Spotify and Apple. Hello, Ethel. Spotify and Apple Podcasts. That would be brilliant. Oh, my God, Ethel. Quiet. I'm trying to record a podcast. I know someone's at the door. Don't have to be a guard dog when I'm doing my podcast. She hasn't sat with me for a while while I'm podcasting, to be fair. <laughs> She's so cute. You're like a little teddy bear, aren't you? But yeah, anyway, I'll speak to you guys next Wednesday. Um, also, don't forget to use my Huel link. That's so exciting. Still, I can't believe I'm still sponsored by such a great company. Um, but yeah, I did talk about that near the start of the podcast. So go back and re-listen to that if you forgot. But with that, I hope you have a great week, guys. And I will speak to you all next Wednesday at 8pm as usual. Bye, guys.